All right, I have a steamer that's not heating. So just to quickly go into the history, uh, we've changed the transformer three times now. It keeps blowing as soon as you turn on the on off switch. This is my first time on site. So obviously this call is gonna get my full and undivided attention. All right, just to escalate things a little bit more, these transformers are crazy expensive. Uh, we'll see it here, so it's 600 volts. 24 they're fifteen hundred and seventy five dollars list Canadian each for one transformer uh, We're down three transformers here, so we really need to figure out what's going on All right, so here's our schematic Okay, our transformer That keeps blowing is this guy right here Okay So what I've done is I've installed two fuses in line one here and one here and what that's going to do is uh, whatever shorting out our transformer it's going to take out either side of these fuses and then we save uh, this very expensive transformer all right so as soon as i turn the switch on after two seconds here i go from 130 volts to zero volts coming out of that fuse all right so we start through these fuses we're coming at 600 volts, L1, L2, and then we're coming out of our transformer at 120. In our case, it's actually 130. So we're coming out of our transformer here. We're going to call L1 our red side. We're coming to our power switch. And then same thing's happening on the blue side. We're going to come through this temporary fuse that I installed. And we're going to come right down into our, this switch here. Okay, as soon as the switch is put in the on position, we're sending power down through here. So basically this whole side here is going to be hot as soon as we hit that on off switch. And it's going to go right down to our drain valve. And then on the L1 side, we're going to come through here. We're going to power up our board on L1. And then we're going to power up our drain valve right here. We'll finish drawing power to our board here. So as soon as the on off switch is turned on, okay, this board is hot. Okay, this drain valve is hot. This light right here is going to be hot. And as soon as this board gets power and the high, well, high water level probe is not grounded right here, we're going to send power to our solenoid. So this WF terminal is going to send power up through our three minute timer. It's going to send the L1 side to the water valve. And then secondly, we're always going to be hot on this side. Even with the power switch off, we're always hot on that fill solenoid. So now we have a fourth load that we're looking at that could potentially be the problem. All right, so the next thing I did was isolate all four of those components that I feel like could be the issue. Uh, sorry, you can't see it in the video. Uh, it was just, I was videotaping someone else. I didn't really want to show them. And in the footage, they're in the footage. That's also why there's no audio in any of it. So what I did was remove the four loads. So I disconnect the wiring here. I disconnected the wiring to this board. I disconnect the wiring to this light and I disconnected wire to this drain valve. Now as soon as I disconnect the wiring to this board here, okay, this water valve is kind of out of the circuit. So these two have to be connected together. Okay, so I disconnected all four of those. That fuse is no longer blowing. So what I did next was I started reconnecting things one at a time. All right, so 
First thing I did was reconnect the power light. The fuse did not blow. Then I reconnected this drain valve. Um, the fuse blew. So this drain valve here is the issue. Okay, so what I did after that is I left that disconnected. I reconnected the board. And this fill solenoid. And the unit started filling up and did not blow the fuse. The reason why I connected all the other components, I just wanted to make sure there wasn't several shorts in the system. All right, so right now I have the drain valve disconnected. I have 130 into my fuses, 130 volt out of my fuses. The unit's running for more than two seconds, which is a huge improvement. And you can see my solenoid, fill solenoid is running. We have power there. All right, then I ohmed out my drain valve. I'm getting 0.8 ohms on it. I disconnected both wires from it. All right, so I was getting 0.8 ohms. So if we just do our, our quick calculation here, so um, voltage is equal to amperage times resistance. So our voltage is 130 volts. And if we divide that by 0.08 ohms, We get 162.5 amps. All right, so our problem here was the drain valve, okay? So it was blowing the transformer. So what happens is it was drawing that 162 amps or whatever it was drawing. And what happens is it looks for the path of least resistance. So in this case, it was following this line here and it was taking out the transformer. Okay, how I know it was taking the neutral line is because I kept blowing this temporary fuse right here. Okay, so a couple hints that I was getting here that it was not a short. So I didn't look for dead shorts because I wasn't going to ohm everything out. Was I was getting two seconds until it was blowing the fuse. It wasn't instantly. So that was telling me like something is seized or something's drawing lots of amps. Okay, so my mind was stuck on that for the troubleshooting. But based on I had those fuses hooked up in line it didn't matter to me uh, how many attempts it took me because at this point I wasn't blowing the transformer so very interesting service call there uh, blew three of those super expensive transformers I wasn't brought into the loop until the third one was blown at that point it was you know no troubleshooting over the phone let me just get on site and figure out what's going on so from studying that schematic I figured out okay there's only four possibilities uh, the water board, the fill solenoid, that transformer, or the power light. So what I'd done at that point is I'd put some fuses in line. I always keep those fuse holders in my truck. Uh, it's common on the Henny Penny fryers that you lose. Uh, you blow those transformers on a 24-volt circuit. Usually it's the solenoid or the gas valve. So I'll put those in series too anytime I blow a transformer. And now going forward on this unit, anytime I blow a transformer, I'm going to ohm out that fill solenoid and I'm gonna definitely ohm out that drain valve as you can see that it ohmed out so low and I'll see that sometimes on the contactor coils if you ohm it out and you're getting like zero or one ohms uh, that amp draw is gonna be crazy high and it's it's gonna blow whatever fuse or whatever boards in line so just make sure whenever you're blowing a component you blow it a second time like hey it's time to put something in line and let's figure out let's let the fuse that $3 or $5 fuse take the hit instead of our $1,500 component.